Les, I wanted you to see this. This is a 32,000 microfarad capacitor, our new core. And I'm, uh, I want you to try to see the scope and the meters. Forty volts. Yeah, that'd be like lightning if I shredded it out. Okay, uh, what are we doing today? I'm sure you're asking. This is a sniffer coil, and uh, what it will do is, when it's put over a wire or placed on a wire or different places in a circuit, it will uh, react to the amperage or inductance in the wire or surrounding area and show up on the oscilloscope. Uh, John Curran me mentioned this uh, sniffer coil on the uh, monopole forum and uh, so I thought that uh, I'd give it a try especially since I've had this one sitting around for years and years and had used it for something completely unrelated. So uh, I'm going to hook this up and, and get something going. Uh, let me tell you what we're going to do here just uh, in case you're not interested and don't care to go on with uh, watching the video. I'm going to try some of these various coils in a self oscillating mode I'm going to use a, a little self-oscillating circuit here that's similar to a Joule C thief or a blocking oscillator or um, SS modified SSG, whatever. Uh, it's sort of uh, irrelevant because we're just looking for something to drive these coils. So uh, I'll hook the, the sniffer up and, and show you what we're looking at and we'll go on from there. Hold on. Okay, so now the sniffer coil is hooked up and I'll get the oscillator going. I'm sure you can probably hear that. So, what about the scope? Well, this is what we're seeing on that um, sniffer coil. <clears throat> So there's ringing there, right? Or what we think is ringing. Look at that a little closer. Expand it. I guess as far as ringing goes, that's a pretty good ring. All right, so we're operating in and around that 800 hertz range. And uh, that seems to be what people like with these oscillating circuits, or at least it's a popular frequency range. So, what are we seeing here? This, that's the question. So I'm gonna, I'm going to change the uh, the sniffer coil over and get it off of this line and try something else. So hold on. First of all, let me tell you what I'm doing here a little further. I have this 12 volt tractor battery running the oscillator. So I've got 12 volts running these two uh, 12 volts in series, so I'm charging the 24 volt batteries with the 12, and I'm putting the sniffer on top of the battery now. And we'll go over to the scope. So there you go. So this now is just sitting free of the wires, and as I move it up and down you can see that it's picking up something from the battery <clears throat> so what is it picking up um, I guess we'd have to give some consideration to the fact that it's probably picking this up off of the plates of the battery so what good is that we can take a picture of this and put it in our photo file or say we've done this but how does it relate to anything now the reason I want to look into this is because Les and I have been trying to figure out why so many people have so many successful experiments and it works once never happens again so what I'm trying to do is see if this correlates to anything with regards to the uh, 
triggering or the oscillations or anything else. So I'm going to add some traces to this and try some other coils and we'll see what we can find out about relationships with this uh, with this uh, scope shot. We're doing a pretty nice job of charging the uh, 24 volt bank as we're going along here. And adjustments can be made over here uh, on the circuit. Uh, so maybe I have to show you sort of what's going on with the circuit. This is, you can find this circuit anywhere on, on the internet as a um, Joel, Joel Thief charger. You'll a lot of times see a uh, light emitting diode in here, lower voltages. Uh, you have a, a resistor here between the collector and base, which start oscillations. Sometimes there's one from the base over to the negative rail. John Bedini uses a lot of a lot of circuits like that where there's both, and uh, he usually uses fixed once he finds out what the frequency is and proper oscillations that he wants, but uh, you'll see a lot of adjustable potentiometers in here with people setting and adjusting the um, oscillator to, to their needs. So anyhow, I've got the same setup. Here's a, a decade resistor that's in place of uh, the resistor between the base and collector and I have another pot here that would be similar to the pot that you use in an SSG so I can change this frequency a little bit and along with that the current changes somewhat I'm using this standard analog meter and I'm on the 500 milliamp scale so I'm going to try to do most of these experiments about here as a benchmark with about 200 milliamps so anyhow that's the setup standard uh, little NPN or big NPN uh, 21194 MJO and let's go on from okay, there. So I've set up a second channel probe onto the uh, base of the transistor so now we'll see what uh, we saw before with the sniffer coil plus the added uh, base trace. And uh, you know, there we go. I put a uh, little bit of a sun shield over the scope so I don't have to turn the lights off all the time. So anyhow, you see that the base is turning on and off as a square wave. You can see that the on time of the transistor is a lot longer than what I would need but you don't have control of that too much with the uh, self-oscillating circuit. Now a, a PWM circuit uh, where you can control the pulse width, you could cut this off a lot earlier and save all the wattage that's getting used up on the uh, duty cycle of the uh, square wave. But anyhow, you can see that the oscillations coincide with the transistor turning off. So there must be a radiant event or spike or pulse going into the battery at this point. And then the plates are ringing over there with the sniffer coil, if that's what we can believe is really happening. So, you know, that looks all pretty practical. But now I'm going to switch one of these over to the uh, high voltage spike hitting the battery and let's see how that looks in comparison so let me set okay, that up. so now I've hooked up the uh, channel 1 probe right directly to the output diode of the circuit which naturally goes directly over to the battery so we're seeing probably the same thing that we'd see if I put the probe directly across the battery so the bottom trace now you can see uh, you can't see probably <clears throat> but the there is a tiny thin pulse that coincides with the beginning of the uh, bell curve or ring, whatever you want to call it. So let me emphasize this a little bit by turning the voltage way down. And uh, 
I would presume this would be the equivalent of what's happening from the H wave. And you can see this, there is a high voltage reaction here where there's a thin pulse going up that coincides with the ring. So all of that looks pretty practical. How useful it is, I don't know, but we're going to get there and, and see what we can do to manipulate this stuff. So I'm going to move on now and try a couple other different coils. And uh, we'll see that things can, can actually get not normal. So stick around. Okay, without uh, changing any of the uh, scope or power settings, I've taken the uh, steel wire rod core coil <laughs> out and I've switched in a uh, coil that has uh, ferret, ferrite pieces in, in the center instead of a welding rod. And uh, let's see what we have over here on the scope now. <clears throat> okay. So now you can see that that high voltage trace in there is a lot more predominant. So well, does that mean that it's hitting the battery with a little more power? Well, it could be. I don't know. And the uh, charge is still going up pretty fair. The frequency has gone down a little bit to 791 hertz, but you know, that's still in that 800 range that people like. Still drawing 200 milliamps. I don't think there's any more to look at on that thing, so we're going to change another coil now. Okay, before, before I change coils, I'm going to uh, show you how some of the adjustments affect these uh, traces. I've, I'm going to change the pot that goes from the trigger coil to the base and as I turn that you can see that the frequency changes a little bit. My current draw is going down so you can actually see the little high voltage spike in there pretty well. So that's the basically the trigger trim. Now I'll click off a few different positions on the uh, other resistor. And that doesn't seem to change things much. So I'm going to go on to the other coil now. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to an air coil. This is just sort of like a small window motor coil. And I'm going to hook that up to the power right now. Okay, we immediately drew a few more milliamps, so I'm going to uh, try to bring that milliamp down to 200, where we were with the others. Uh, that's about it. Pretty close. We'll stay there. Okay, so now what do we have on the scope? Well, this was unchanged from the other coil, so our frequency changed. We're up at uh, 5.8 kHz now with the air coil. Let me see if I can stabilize this trace a little bit and we'll see what we have now. How do you like that? There's something a little bit different. Now the ringing or the bell curve has really turned into something a little bit different and let's look at this uh, bottom trace here where you can clearly see that the high voltage spike is a little more visible and let's see am I imagining this or Turn the brightness up a little bit. I can see it just barely way up here above everything else where we couldn't see that before. So now we really we really see something different than what we're normally seeing as a uh, bell curve. Yeah? Okay, what does that mean? 
the uh, frequency is all different, but the spacing here in this oscillation from the um, uh, sniffer coil, it it looks like it's spaced further. Does that mean that we're getting more power into the uh, plates of the battery? I don't know. But it's something duly noted that uh, it's repeatable and different based on the fact that there's a uh, air core being used. So let's just um, take a look at the base once again as compared to the uh, sniffer over the battery itself. Let me get that set. Okay, so here's the base trace below the uh, oscillations picked up, picked up on the um, sniffer coil. So we have something that's similar. The if I'm seeing it right, the transistor is on, turns off, the oscillations start. But what's going on here? I don't know if I noticed this before on the other trace, but the oscillations start when this on the on the uh, trailing edge of of that square wave, and I would only expect them to be oscillating through the off period of the uh, transistor. But what's going on here because the oscillation starts at this trailing edge stays oscillate the oscillations stay on all the while that the transistor is turned on and then when it turns off again the oscillations start again. So in this case it looks like the oscillations are staying on longer than on the uh, previous coil. I'll have to take a look at that and see. I'll uh, see if I can switch in a comparison. Okay, so now what happens when I adjust the trim pot? So you can see that as I change the trim, the resonance in the battery or the oscillations or whatever we're looking at change. And incidentally at that point there where the oscillations are higher the current draw has actually dropped down now to 150 milliamps instead of 200. Now just a few milliamps difference and we've lost some of that higher oscillation. So I'm continuing to go down in current draw and we get changes in the, in what's happen, happening in the battery. I'm going back up and you can see the frequency speeds up. I get a quick jump right there which indicates some sort of a very sensitive little tuning area where I'm only seeing a change of about 20 milliamps. And what's happening with the charge at that point? I'm going down here, so with just a few milliamps extra, and that jump, I'm certainly charging again. Up, down, I'm trying to hit that spot just right. So with hitting that just right, the charge, charge stabilizes instead of going down. All right, so there, just I actually went down a few milliamps again, and I hit a point where I'm charging again. So there's something there that you won't see on the amp draw, yet there's something very different happening here with the sniffer coil and what's going on with the plates in the battery. So here again it goes on and off. When I hit that that area just around 200 milliamps I get another jump. I have a hard time holding it at 
200 milliamps and of course the charge rate is going up much nicer now with the air core you know, <laughs> I'm not saying the air core is better because I don't know what kind of charge is going into the battery you know there's all kind of uh, speculation and uh, and thoughts about what's a good charge, what's a bad charge, what's a compatible charge. There's uh, so many different ways now to charge a battery with um, capacitor discharges, uh, solid state. Uh, uh, they all seem to have a different effect as to what's compatible with the uh, operation that you plan for your battery. So anyhow, there's your air core and uh, oh, that's really promising. I like that. And that's nothing. It's just a, a coil of wire here. Good or bad, I don't know, but just some more data gathering. I'm going to go on to a uh, special coil now and let's have a look at that one. <clears throat> okay, so what do I have here? This is a uh, coil that has a steel winding in along with the copper. So it basically is a hundred foot of uh, number 18 wire, uh, number 26 steel, and number 26 copper for a trigger. And uh, this produces some unusual effects, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so here's the steel core. Uh, looking at the um, spike on the battery as well as the uh, information from the stiffer coil. And uh, it looks like the ring also got uh, a little bit more separated. I don't know if that is good or bad once again. And I'm going to turn the sniffer off once here and just look at the pulse across the battery. So now you can see how much more definite this high voltage pulse is or the reaction to the battery uh, reaction in the battery to the pulse which is much brighter and much more positive than what we've had with any of the other coils so the rest still looks pretty similar with the possibly the plates reacting to the high voltage pulse again and pretty much in phase Forgot to mention the uh, charge rate is also pretty good with this and uh, normally would be slowing down by the time I reach 24.5 volts on this. So I'd say the charge is pretty good. Okay, so now I switch back to looking at the trigger compared to the um, sniffer coil. And so far everything has looked pretty much in phase and what you'd expect. But now with the steel coil, steel core, <laughs> steel coil, I'm going to adjust the trigger a little bit. And let's watch the uh, ring in the battery compared to what the trigger's doing. <clears throat> Notice this ring is now not on the trailing edge of the square wave. It's moved from here way over to here. I mean that's nearly 180 degrees out of phase. Charging accelerates a little bit. We move it a little bit more. Whoop, see it jump back? See, you can see it changing. It's even over further more furthermore and I can't do all these things at one time but as you can clearly see the the ringing can be moved with relation to the trigger setting so here we are back on the with the ring coming in at the trailing edge of the square wave Now you see it's moved 
over to the leading edge of the square wave. <clears throat> Let me get my pointer here again. It's moved from here over to here. What does that mean? I, I don't know. But if I experience something interesting and check this particular thing out and find something looks like this, I know that I have a uh, benchmark that I can work to. So whether or not that's significant, look how far off it is there. I'm not sure what it's telling me, but I think it's screaming to be investigated. <laughs> so anyhow, there you have that. I have one other trace to show you. If I can Last find it. I'm going to try to make this fast. This is the square wave on the uh, base of the transistor. This is a shot of the uh, oscillations on the battery or the ringing. And this is the uh, square wave transposed over the ringing. Notice that there's a ring both at the top and the bottom of the uh, square wave. Here's the uh, add between the two. There's two rings. I'm ringing the bell twice, maybe. Back. Notice top and bottom. There, you see, the top of the square wave has a ring and then in between the square wave. Okay, here's something that I haven't shown yet. This is the uh, open collector scope trace. And I only have, I think if I remember right, it was about 7 or 8 volts on the input. So I wouldn't have as uh, much of a damage on the transistor. So you can see there's about 350 volts. And uh, there's a little bit of a separation in the, in the uh, high voltage upper part. It's a little bit unusual. But you can see there's plenty of high voltage there. Uh, like I said, about 350 volts. So back to this other scope trace again. I'm not sure what's going on with this separation in the um, oscillations or ringing, if it is ringing. And uh, it's quite unusual. It um, it actually changes when you when you do some t uh, tuning. I lost a, a clip <laughs> because I didn't have the camera turned on, but uh, you can see that the um, amplitude now is a little bit different here in this area. And what happens is, as you would tune, the amplitude would change from the top to the bottom, get larger, smaller, and so on. So let's get back to the sniffer coil. Your sniffer coil can be anything. This this is a uh, coil from a 36-volt relay that I took out of a golf cart relay. Anyhow, you can use anything for a sniffer. This is a, a coil of wire from a gold mine electric electronics. One time they were selling this little air relay for, or um, solenoid for a dollar a piece. And it was a nice bunch of wire for that price, so I bought a bunch of them. But you could use anything. Anything that's a, this would, uh, you know, anything would be a sniffer coil. This would work. Anything. So anyhow, uh, let me get on with something else and we'll see what else we can find.